and talk through talk through uh, a few uh, opportunities that I see, and also uh, at the end of it, we would uh, uh, have a Q and A session where I'm able to answer all of your questions, if any. Uh, Otherwise, we will see you at the training that will take place uh, in due course. Thank you once again. So a lot has been happening in the energy space. Um, I wish we were having this conference in person so that we can have, at least I'll be able to see everyone, but thank you very much for honoring us today. And thank you for uh, registering. And uh, I pray that we'll be able to impact you, know, you today and, uh, the, the knowledge we're going to share today we should be able to uh, give you an inroad into what's happening in the country. Now, uh, I've talked about the PIB that was passed uh, yesterday. Uh, once it comes into, into, into law, uh, a lot of funds are going to be made, av made available, uh, which will be based on the levy that we charged by the government. Already, the government have put about 250 billion naira last year, uh, which is available for investment in gas projects. Um, this will have a lot of impact on the economy. You know, a lot of jobs will be created. Industries can, uh, uh, um, uh, we're gonna see a lot of industries come into play for manufacturing of cylinders, accessories, and so on. and so forth. Then, uh, now we've, we've outlined that we're going to talk about energy transition. The, wor the world is going in a certain direction. Nigeria is not left out as the world is becoming a global village. Now, um, what is energy transition? If you look at our outline, it talks about energy transition. Energy transition is simply moving from one fear regime to another. And in this case, and in this era, we're talking about moving from fossil fuels to cleaner energy. Uh, we're moving away from coal and crude oil, which emit uh, a lot of uh, uh, greenhouse gases that has impacted uh, our environment. Global warming is a result of this greenhouse gas emissions. So the world in policy and in terms of investment is moving towards cleaner fuel, which of course, uh, uh, means renewables as well as gas. And so looking at history, starting from the 16th century and onto the 19th century, we've seen a situation where the world depended on wood for, industrial, uh, for construction of boats in the US, for construction of houses in the US, for industries in, the, in Europe and so on. And then as the forest resources depleted, the world saw a need to move away from wood. Whale oil was also uh, a major commodity that was traded amongst organizations in the uh, 16th century and up to the 19th century. And as the whale population depleted, the world had to come up with laws to protect the world whale uh, population. And therein came the second phase of transition. So energy transitions have happened in the past. In the 16th century, up to the 19th century, the world moved from organic fuels into the fossil fuel era because coal was discovered. In commercial quantity, oil was discovered in commercial quantity. And so during this era, we've seen trade in oil and also in coal between countries. But of course, using these fuels means establishing a bigger carbon footprint which has led us now to the third phase of our transition in terms of energy. And now the world, starting from Paris in 2015, where over 90 countries put their signature to the Paris Accord to cut down emissions and reduce utilization of fossil-based fuels. The countries made a promise and a commitment with funds that voted for investment in cleaner fuels. The target is to ensure that 50% of the energy utilization in 
in the world by the year 2050 is going to see more electric vehicles on the street. You're going to see also a lot of energy that we use in our homes will come from wind turbines, solar uh, uh, power plants, and a lot of vehicles on the streets will be electric. Now, in this phase, crude oil will play a less role. Coal, already coal plants in Europe and in other parts of the world in China are shutting down. And so we're going to see gas come in as a major commodity because gas emits less greenhouse gases than crude oil and uh, coal. Moving forward. Now, in terms of price of gas and, and crude oil in the global economy, from the year, from early 2000, during the Iraqi wars, of course, the crude oil prices went up. And as well, during the global financial crisis in 2008, it went to the peak of over $125 per barrel. Since then, after the global financial crisis in 2008, oil has seen a decline. It recovered a little with the Fukushima disaster in 2011, but has been on the decline since then. Oil has not hit the $100 level since, and oil has gone below 70 because globally, the world in terms of investment is moving towards gas and renewables. Gas has become cheaper as well, as if you can see the blue line there shows gas, and gas has not been above $4 for a long time as well. So gas has become cheaper. Crude oil as well has, has seen a decline in terms of investment and trade. And so the future is looking really bleak for oil and more promising for gas. Where does Nigeria fit in this whole gas equation? Now, Nigeria by our definition is clearly a gas nation. We have about 30, 37 billion barrels of gas, of, of oil in reserves, which we have been tapping over the past 50 years. And these reserves going by our daily production has a life of about 50 to 51 years in it. As such, we have a limited supply of oil that cannot take us beyond 51 years. Now, Compare that to our gas resources. Nigeria has about 200 trillion cubic feet of natural gas in wells that are proven. If I do an assessment based on our current production rate in a, in a reserve to production ratio, that means Nigeria has over 100 years of proven gas reserves. So the future of Nigeria lies more in gas than it is in oil. Now, this is talking about just the proven gas resources. There are gas resources and reserves that exist in wells that have not been tapped already. That is estimated as a, at about 600 trillion cubic feet of gas. If I do the math based on the gas uh, reserve to production ratio, Nigeria has close to 300 years of gas play. And this clearly indicates we are more a gas nation than an oil nation. Now, how is gas produced? You know, this is uh, for those that do not know where gas comes from and what I'm talking about. Now, when gas is produced, basically gas exists in the Earth's crust as a combination of many components. There are many, you know, so the hydrocarbon basically is composed of several elements, starting with methane, which is basically one carbon atom, which is C1. Uh, 68 to 90 percent of that is uh, what we call natural gas, and that is further broken down into LNG and LPG. About 2 to 11 percent of that, uh, and up to 15 percent, is actually propane and butane, which is now the LPG you're talking about. And so, natural gas basically is comprised of two of several components, but the majority of it is basically natural gas followed by LPG. Now, Nigeria basically is a gas nation. Most of our, our gas comes from offshore production and onshore production. It ends up in the market as basically two commodities, natural gas that comes into the pipeline or, and which is further compressed into CNG, which can be used for industrial heating. It can, it can be used for power generation. It can be used for automobiles. 
LPG as well can be used in agriculture uh, for pesticides, for production of, for most of you that use fleets and uh, uh, insecticides in your homes, insecticide is purely LPG. For production of plastics, LPG. For domestic use, which is where most of the houses, uh, most of the utilization in Nigeria and Sub-Saharan Africa is largely for domestic fuel. In your kitchen now, probably you are using LPG. So I've broken the market into two, LPG and CNG. And so these are the two areas where we see a lot of opportunity. In terms of CNG, the Nigerian market right now, it's not at a mature, it's not even, I can't even classify it as green. CNG plants are not more than, you know, uh, 10 across the country. There are some in Potakot, in Aba, in Benin, that belongs to Nipko. And then there are a few plants in the South House. And the government recently launched the AKK project, which will see the gas pipeline move from Ajaokota, where it is at the moment, all the way to Abuja, Kaduna, and Kano. With the, with the laying of this pipeline basically comes an opportunity for everybody to participate. And in terms of CNG, you can set up CNG motor stations, you can set up, set up CNG daughter stations, and then you can look into the market where a lot of CNG vehicles will be rolled out based on a government project. Um, then you have LPG. For LPG, of course, as I mentioned, uh, earlier, it can be used for automotive fuel, agriculture, petrochemical, and domestic fuel. We see a market where about 7 million tons of gas can be distributed into and consumed within the country. At the moment, we are 13%, which means we're, produce, we're consuming about 1 million tons of LPG. There's 7 million tons to go. And so the opportunity basically is massive. The LPG infrastructure in the country currently is nationwide. So there's more LPG infrastructure around the country than there is CNG. LPG at the moment comes from Boni mostly, and then also a lot of it is imported into the country through coastal depots. Uh, some LPG as well come from across the border from Niger. Uh, there's a refinery there called Soras that produces about you know uh, 20,000 tons of LPG a year. Uh, but most uh, of that comes in trucks across the border, and uh, a lot of the fueling station um, gas plants in the north get their supply from this source. Every other person basically buys from Lagos, Wari, Calabar, or Portacot. Now, coming down to this gas expansion program that I'm talking about, I've mentioned to you that a PIB has been passed, the gas infrastructure fund is about to be set up, uh, government is going to charge 5% levy on all procurement products, which means as you go to a fuel station to buy fuel, petrol, 5%, 0.5% of that will go into a fund that you can now access with a, with a bankable uh, plan and utilize to set up your business. There's also 250 billionaire that's available at the CBN. Not many people have applied for it because maybe people do not know about it. People also do not know about the gas sector. And so you're not able to put together a cogent business plan to access this fund. And so uh, these are the opportunities we see in the market. Uh, the gas expansion program in detail um, basically is accessible through the uh, Federal Ministry of Petroleum Resources. Uh, but you can also apply directly to the CBN. Either you go through NERSEL or you go through um, the, uh, a deposit money bank. For LPG as well, this uh, government's objective is that they want to connect 30 million homes in Nigeria with LPG. Right now, there are less than 4 million cylinders in circulation. It means the, the 30 million cylinders have to come from somewhere. It has to come from a factory. So someone has to manufacture that. So there lies the opportunity for people to set up factories. Someone needs to provide the accessories for these cylinders because the cylinders need a hose, need a valve, and so on and so forth. Further on, someone needs to supply that gas. You know, going down the line, someone needs to bottle it and so on and so forth. And so this would open up a massive industry wherein everybody can participate. 
Now, going into details, Nigeria, and this one I'm doing just to put into perspective the kind of opportunities you can begin to look at. The government has said that the gas fund that they're putting aside will be utilized for CNG. Now, for you to understand what that means, I want to compare the market to Iran at the moment. Iran has about uh, 80, 81 million, 82 million people, but they have about 4.5 million vehicles using gas. Those 4.5 million vehicles using gas uh, access CNG through about 2,400 CNG stations. And there are over 150,000 distribution pipelines around the country. And this, the government has set up over uh, 20 years, 20, 20, 30 years since the 90s. India, on the other hand, also has about 3.4 million vehicles utilizing CNG. They have about 1,700 CNG stations. Now compare that to where Nigeria is. Nigeria at the moment has about 5,000 vehicles using gas. Most of the vehicles are concentrated in Benin region. Uh, this is a result of the program that was rolled out by NIPCO some time back. They converted about 5,000 day about of vehicles utilizing uh, gas. Dangote also has tried to convert most of his trucks to CNG, but it's basically for his own use. So 5,000 vehicles and you're targeting uh, a population of over 12 million vehicles because the population of vehicles in Nigeria is about 12 million vehicles. You can see that in my previous slide. Let me just go back a little. So now here, Nigeria has about 12 million vehicles in circulation. Out of those uh, 12 million, but to be precise, I can say 11.7 million vehicles, you have about 5,000 only using CNG. So which means you have more than 11 million vehicles that need to be converted to use CNG. Someone needs to provide those, the workshops where these vehicles will go to convert. Someone needs to provide a kit where those vehicles would go and be kitted for them to be able to use CNG. Someone needs to provide a CNG cylinder. Someone needs to provide a hose and so on and so forth. Mechanics can now set up because this is a specialized product. And so if vehicles are converted to use CNG, there needs to be specialized technicians that will be able to come to fix these vehicles. And so this is a massive opportunity. And I see it coming to play in due course. We're going to have a program on just CNG to be able to uh, dim dimension this uh, opportunity for you, for you to see further. Now, coming back to the retail, Nigeria has about 17 retail stations for, for CNG. These retail stations compared to Iran that has 2,461 CNG stations to service 5, 4 million vehicles. If Nigeria needs to convert 4.5 million vehicles, they will need approximately that amount of retail stations for everybody to be able to access CNG. So you're going from 17 where we are to 2,500 CNG stations. Now, let me put that into perspective. Everybody buys petrol right now. You have your car, you want to buy petrol. The number of petrol stations in the country is about 10,000 to 20 to 15,000 uh, retail stations. If I look at what Ipman has, Ipman has about uh, 10,000 retail stations. If I calculate what the major marketers have, let's put it about 5,000. So you're looking at about 17,000 stations currently dispensing petrol. So now all of these stations, I'm talking about 17, CNG stations in Iran is about 2,400. So which means you, for you to go to 5 million vehicles, which is just 50% or 40% of the population of vehicles in Nigeria, you're looking at going from 17 retail stations to about 2,461. So this is a journey that the government has to undertake. And this is an opportunity that you can begin to play in. LPG, which is our, the focus of our course, also has a massive amount of opportunity. If you look at the bottom of my screen, you will see that outlined in terms of the amount of infrastructure the government needs to put in place. Nigeria has about 35 to 40 million homes. Only about 4 million of those homes have access to gas, which means about 30 to 34 million homes do not have gas. Most of these homes are in the rural areas and also in the hinterland areas of Nigeria. Now, for, for government to succeed in their plan, these homes need to be equipped with cylinders, which means you need to produce about 30 to 35 million cylinders 
and distribute to these homes or sell to these homes for them to be able to use LPG. Let's look at South Africa. South Africa has about 14.5 million households. Out of those households, about 12 million of them have access to gas because they have cylinders, which means the market penetration in South Africa is about 82%. Uh, of the households that have access to gas. Nigeria has about 13%. So the journey for us is to move from that 4.4 million to at least the 12 million or even beyond up to the 30 million that we're talking about. This means factories would have to be set up locally to produce the cylinders. Factories need to be set up to produce the valves and the hoses that people will use on the cylinders. Gas plants need to be set up whereby these cylinders need to be filled up. If government is rolling out gas cylinders in the rural areas, there need to be retail outlets that are put in these areas for people to access. In terms of the opportunity that we see, we are more concentrated in terms of up, um, up the value chain. A lot of people are coming in asking me these days, they want to build storages for LPG. Already, there are more than enough storages in play. In 2007, when we started the domestic gas program, only about one or two or three LPG storages were in play. There was one in Calabar. There was one, which is a PPMC storage in Apapa, uh, and then some hinterland storages. Subsequently, NIPCO built about 5,000 tons of LPG storage. They've expanded that to over 10,000. VTOL, on the other hand, has invested in over 10,000 tons of storage. AYM Shafa is built on about 5,000 in Ogara. Uh, Tech uh, Matrix has built up storage in uh, Wari, which is one of the major depots right now for LPG. Uh, uh, what do you call them? There are many storages in Calabar. There are storages as well in Lagos, Techno, Rain, and so on and so forth. So there are already a lot of storages already developed, some in development that come into being. And so in terms of logistics, I think that is covered. Where we see a lot of opportunity basically is down the market, down the value chain. There are not enough trucks. There are not enough filling plants. And then more importantly, the last mile is not covered. You have about 34 million homes and most of those homes are supplied by the retailer on the streets. That retailer has no brand. That retailer engages in short filling. And so customers today will buy uh, one 12.5 kg. It lasts them one week. The next time they buy it, it lasts them two weeks. The next time, they, the third time they buy it, it lasts them only a few days because they are not getting the right volume of gas. Also, the rural areas are not covered. So customers have to, uh, and also a lot of the urban areas are not covered because to set up a gas plant basically, he, there are lots of licensing hurdles that I need to, to go through. And so there's a huge gap between the homes and the gas plant. And so this is where the opportunity is for companies to come in and roll out last mile distribution strategies whereby people can be able to access this gas easily. Moving on, where do we see the market? Initially, when KPMG released their study in 2015, they estimated that by 2020, the market will be about, uh, by 2030, the market will be about 934,000 tons. Now, 10 years ahead of that schedule, the market has hit already 1 million tons per annum. And so the projection of KPMG has been dropped already and uh, trumped by already the If the market is able to be, it means that this twenty thirty is. Hello, Mr. Nobert. It's going to come earlier. Sorry. Oh, I think your network was uh, it was a bit shaky, but please go on. Hello, David. 
Yes, please go yeah, on. Um, um, I thought the yeah, yeah. Which is supplied by someone. Okay, so there's a gap between 1 million to 3.6 million tons. If we go by our own estimation, if you add cooking gas to it, auto gas to it, you're looking at close to 7 million tons per annum. Because if you want to roll out CNG vehicles at the moment, it is easier to roll out LPG vehicles. because already bottling plants can because that we use gas would be more LPG than CNG. And so the market gap is between 1 million to 3.6 million tons, which is a conservative number as put together by KPMG. Or you can look at the more optimistic number of about 7 million tons, which ever play for everyone with the right opportunity, with the right plan. Now, how can you put this plan together? This here is a sort of a matrix that puts into perspective the kind of investment that you can be thinking of putting together for you to access the funds that government is going to roll out. Money banks, the CBN is also working with NERSA Microfinance Bank. The funds, the 250 billionaire, and also the fund that will be set up by the infrastructure fund can be accessed through this means or through the bank of industry. I mean, looking at the um, supply side, already, as I said, there are a lot of depots. During our training on how to set up an LPG retail plant, we're going to show you a slide on the number of trucks that currently exist for distribution of LPG and show you the gap in terms of the number of trucks that are required to move the amount of LPG that government needs to put uh, to drive the market to where it's supposed to be. Now, these LPG trucks uh, are required. So even if you set up an LPG plant, you can either invest in your own truck or you charter from a third party. So it is a major area investment someone can look at. I'll focus on LPG and then I'll come to CNG. Coming into the market, you can be a distributor for LPG. You can own a bottling plant. You can also own a smaller uh, mini LPG plant, which by the way, uses a dispenser. That dispenser can also be modified to be able to dispense into a cylinder and dispense into a vehicle. So, which means as the autogas vehicles are rolled out, you can serve both customers coming from homes and serve vehicles uh, with gas. Coming to the home, I've shown you that there's a huge gap between homes and LPG bottling plants. What I've not seen is people coming up with last mile schemes whereby customers can just pick up their phones, put it on, and be able to access gas by the tap of a button. So which means people, IT companies can come in. If you can see the radio signals are put there basically indicates communication, right? So which means there's a lot of opportunity for IOT, uh, which is internet of things. So a lot of IT opportunity also exists. You can either provide LPG distribution apps. You can also provide uh, RFID tracking uh, devices where people can track their cylinders and so on and so forth. So these are all opportunities that exist. On the other hand, you can also be a logistic provider. For government to distribute uh, LPG kits, cylinders, uh, LPG combustion kits, and so on and so forth, they need a huge amount of logistics in terms of warehouses, in terms of distribution trucks, and so on and so forth. All of these things can be provided by you. Now, these cylinders come from somewhere. So I've talked about factories. So you can set up factories for cylinders. You can set up factories for valves. You can set up factory for hoses and so on and so forth. But most importantly, if you look at the right side of the screen, you can set up a conversion workshop. So you don't have to be a trader. You don't have to be a bottling plant owner. You can be someone that has a small workshop with technicians that have been well-trained and licensed to convert vehicles to use LPG or CNG. That is an opportunity you can look at. There are also opportunities where people can also provide training and equip all of these technicians 
to be able to provide the services that is required to drive the market. Coming down to CNG, there's need for CNG compressor stations because if CNG is rolling out this vehicle, somebody needs to compress them into CNG. That CNG needs to be moved in a, in a truck and the truck for movement of CNG is called a cascade. And so someone needs to provide those cascades. Right now, the cascades in existence are not enough to even drive uh, the 5,000 vehicles that are in circulation, not to talk of the 5 million vehicles that might come into play in the coming years. At the market end, retail outlets need to be set up. And so when you're able to articulate all of these opportunities into your business plan, you can access the funds that are available at CBN through deposit money bank. So it means you can approach your bank with a good plan to set up either gas uh, transportation or an LPG bottling plant. The bank is able now to apply on your behalf to the CBN to access 250 billion that the government has put aside. If you are doing a smaller business that's less than 50 million, you can now go through Nursel or the Bank of Industry to apply for this loan. So if you need a loan to set up, maybe to build an app for LPG, you need a loan to set up a conversion workshop that you need less than 50 million. You need, an, you need a 50 million there to set up a, just a retail outlet or a small mini gas plant. You can apply through Nursel or Bank of Industry as long as you have a cogent business plan. For you to be able to put together a good business plan, you need to understand the industry. This is why we are putting together this course for you to be able to uh, understand the market properly, understand the risk, understand what the opportunity is, you know, uh, come up with a plan to harness this opportunity while also uh, mitigating this risk and that way making it bankable. And uh, with that bankability and a bankable uh, feasibility study, you're able now to go to the bank to be able to apply for these funds. So this for me, it's just in, on a high level what the opportunities are. We will talk about them in detail during the course on how to set up a bottling plant. We'll also have other courses that will talk about how to set up an auto gas station. And also we'll talk about another course that will talk uh, largely about LPG technologies. There you can hear about the IoT. There you can talk about the last mile distribution apps and so on and so forth. So this for me, is just a very high level to give you an idea what is happening in the market and what are the possibilities. Uh, I will leave you now to ask questions and then I'll answer as much as I can. For the questions I won't be able to answer, I would advise we go on to the more detailed course because I do not have the luxury of time. Uh, I think I've um, exhausted my uh, time already. And so I would allow you to ask questions and I will guide you through as we go. Thank you very much. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Mr. Nobert. Um, as always, <laughs> that has been um, informative, even though I sat in the one that we did two weeks ago. So I'll just quickly talk about, um, you know, the training program before we go to the Q&A. Um, I know that um, Mr. Nobert had already um, spoken about it to some degree, um, but the, the training, which, you know, it's scheduled to, to take place on a Wednesday and Thursday, um, that's the 21st and 22nd of this month. Um, we're basically going to be looking at, um, you know, LPG. The, the title of the training is How to Start an LPG um, Gas Business in Nigeria. On your screen there, you can see some of the modules that will be covered, right? We're going to be looking at uh, the general overview of LPG and CNG, um, taking it a step further from, you know, what Mr. Nobel talked about today. We're going to be looking as well at some of the, you know, the factors, right, or the, the drivers, what is driving adoption in Nigeria and the global market, do a bit, bit of contrasting and comparing, see, see what we can learn. Uh, we will look at the distribution trends as well, um, strategies, you know, that you can also use um, if you decide to go into the LPG space. We'll look at LPG tank management, the value chain, the stakeholders, um, you know, Mr. Nobert has talked about where we see a lot of opportunities. Um, you know, we'll look at that a little bit more as well. Um, we'll also look at, you know, a bit of the accounting aspect, right? We'll look at uh, LPG and technology. You talked about IoT, connected devices and the likes. Um, 
you know, technology is meant to be an enabler and um, every business now is, is leveraging on technology. So why not LPG plants as well, right? We'll also be looking at the LPG risk matrix and some strategies to mitigate this risk. So this is not bookish strategies. These are strategies that have been, you know, tried and tested by people who run, you know, their gas plants. Uh, we'll be looking as well at uh, the safety audit checklist and a bit of, you know, um, marketing, um, customer relationship, uh, client retention strategies as well, right? But as you note at the, at the top of, uh, of the slide there, um, what we're trying to do with this training and with subsequent services that I'll talk about shortly is to create a one-stop shop, right, um, for starting a PG business. The, 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 the training we're going to have in, in a few weeks' time is the third, right, um, edition that we're having. We had one in September, we had one in March, and this is the third one, right? And what we've noticed from all of this um, editions is that it's one thing to attend a two days um, um, training, right? It's another thing to, you know, be able to successfully you know, establish your, your plant, or even if it doesn't happen as quickly as you want, consistently make progress, right? That is why, you know, we are introducing the consultation desk, um, which basically um, think about it as having your own LPG um, 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 expert, right? Dedicated LPG expert, um, you know, to help you through the process, right? Of establishing your business. So from the um, business plan development and review to investment analysis, looking at your numbers, your projections, um, you know, helping you go through your fit for use checklist. So basically what that means is from the regulatory aspect, from DPR, for example, your licensing, helping you through that process um, and general addressery, you know, um, that you'd expect from, from a consultant. Also part of this value chain um, that we're, we're, we're working with now is the mentorship um, program. Now, this is the second edition of the mentorship program that would, would be running. Um, what the mentorship program does, it, it, it's a four to six weeks um, program where, you know, you have opportunity to visit um, actual gas plants, right? Um, we, we work with uh, people who run gas plants, although this is currently just for Lagos, um, you know, but, you know, you go there once a week um, for about three hours and you see how it operates, right? It gives you a very first-hand um, experience, right, in terms of what they do there. So this is something that um, we offer as well, as well as access to finance, um, financing opportunities. Um, Mr. Nobe talked about, you know, some of those opportunities, but, you know, what we want to do, um, because it's usually very competitive and, um, you know, there are all these other people who are trying to get the same funds as you, um, it's always good to put your best foot forward, right? And that, that is what we help you to do, you know, through this, through this um, um, value chain as well, right? Um, so at the end of the day, um, when it's all said and done, we believe that, you know, joining the training, right? Um, whether you are new to the, to the space, maybe you don't have any experience in the LPG space, or, you know, you have some bit of experience, but then um, you'd want to take it to the next level, right? Would advise you to join the training that is coming up um, on the 21st um, of this month, right? Because it gives you um, a solid foundation, right? It gives you a very good foundation such that whatever information that you, you know, right? You have a cross-check during the training, you learn new information, you unlearn whatever it is that, you know, um, might not be accurate or factual, right? Um, and you know that you're starting off on a very, very good ground, right? So the training, like I said already, um, is starting on the 21st uh, through to the 22nd of July. Um, we're going to be running it from about 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. It's fully virtual. So regardless of where you are in Nigeria or in the world, um, you can um, you can easily dial in, right? The cost, um, the fee is 85,000, right? But there's the early, early, early bird discount of 75,000, which is actually ending on the 7th. It ended on the 30th, but because of this group of people on the call, we had to extend it um, by a few more days. Um, you know, if you'd like to take um, advantage of, of the early bird discount, which I, I encourage you to, uh, you can please send an email to programs as, at etc.ng, um, or you can just go directly to, to register with the, the registration link, this bit.ly link that is um, visible on your screen. Right. Um, so this is this is basically what we what we have upcoming um, in terms of training. But like Mr. Nobert said, um, you know, we'll be able to reach out subsequently um, about specific trainings for CNG as well, um, and also trainings um, 
you know, around other opportunities in the in the gas uh, value chain. Right. So I'd want to, you know, open it up to questions. Um, if you have a question quickly, just um, please raise your hand um, and then um, we'll be able to take your question. Um, or you could use the, the chat box um, and just type your question and Mr. Nobert would be would be happy to to take those questions as well. All right. So let's let's see if anybody has a question before we call it a day. Um, like I mentioned already, um, we are going to send the recording of this masterclass immediately after the session is done. Um, we'll send the, the recording um, to you um, and you can access access that anytime you want. You can share it with whoever you want to share it with. Unfortunately, I'd seen a question about the about the slides. Um, the slides will not be um, will not be shared. Um, um, but if you do join the training, you know, you'd be able to get access to um, all of this information um, and even more information as well. But what we are guaranteeing that we would share with you is the um is the the video right so do we have any questions i would, I would hand over to mr nobert um, maybe she just give some closing remarks while um um you know we we wait for any more questions i might have okay uh, thank you david i've seen a few questions uh, uh that people have posted um there are not many questions so i believe probably you know everybody has an understanding of this uh, market that we're talking about. There's, there's actually a so, question um, that was sent uh, privately um, to me. Maybe I can just read it out um, and then you then take yeah. the, the second one from, uh, mm -hmm. so this one is from um, Yetunde Taiwo. Um, the question says the growth in the LPG market is anchored on the increased supply of gas. However, the bottlenecks mm -hmm. in that 68 to 90% of gas to power utilization is yet to be resolved. So how confident are you about this growth, All right? So that's the question. I'm just going to paste it, um, okay, you know, for everybody to, to see, right? So that's the question there. Okay, so I will, I will take it from the top, mm -hmm. uh, from all the questions I've been asked. Uh, we've seen a question from Rafiu saying what is CNG, but thank God uh, someone in the group has already answered. CNG is actually compressed natural gas. So thank you. Uh, uh, no for that answer. Um, then the next question, uh, I hope we can get a copy of the presentation. Well, that has been answered by Mr. David. Uh, next, Tello Kenneth says, does your organization assist to put together the business plan package for interested companies? Yes, that uh, is uh, available. You can always get in touch with David for that information. Can you shed more light on the regulatory huddles briefly because that's the bottleneck in Nigeria dream business. Now, agreed, it's been a bottleneck uh, over the years in terms of the uh, multiple regulatory bodies you have to go to. You have to go to uh, DPR for your licenses. If you're importing cylinders, you have to go to SON. If you're putting up a gas plant, you have to go to the Department of Weights and Measures to be able to get a license for your, for your meter. have had these problems, right? But at the same time, the DPR has evolved. The Department of Petroleum Resources has put in place what we call the ease of doing business uh, procedure. And so it's a major hot because it's not going to transition from the DPR to uh, the midstream and downstream regulatory authority. The authority will focus on midstream and downstream activities, while the commission will focus on upstream. Prior to now, DPR was doing everything from top to bottom. If the PIB comes, there will be one agency in charge of the downstream and midstream and another agency for the upstream. So which means less work and they'll be able to have more focus on the market and be able to give you licenses in good time. So uh, a lot of regulatory models, we're gonna talk about it 
in the course in detail. We'll give you an outline of the number of licenses you need to apply for and how you need to go about it to be able to get it out in good time. So all of this will be in detail during the course. Uh, the one you pasted says, um, the growth in the LPG market is anchored on the increased supply of gas. However, the bottlenecks in that 68 to 90% of gas to power utilization is yet to be resolved. So how confident are you about this growth? So first and foremost, the, L, uh, the gas sector is natural gas, the fuel gas is CNG, LPG. The bottlenecks are different. Uh, CNG, yes, will come from a compressor station. The compressor station will have to come from a gas pipeline somewhere. So in terms of gas supply, currently experience for the gas to power uh, uh, industry, it is a function of a lot of factors along the power value chain. There's a lot of liquidity issues in the power market, which has now um, impacted you know, upstream production of gas and so on and so forth. So it's a lot of stranded power, stranded gas, and so on and so forth. LPG on the other hand is available. NLNG produces about 1.8 million tons of LPG. Chevron produces about 400,000 in their uh, uh, offshore production uh, plant in Escravos. Um, Mobile in Oslo produces about 1.2 million tons. NLNG train seven is coming. Also, there's some local production, just like the plants that NMPC set up in Edo to produce LPG in Eredo. So there are lots in terms of LPG supply, I don't see it being a problem. NLNG at the moment exports most of the gas LPG that it produces. Only about 300,000 comes into the market, which means if the market opens up and the conditions are right, NLNG can redirect those volumes into the market. Already, all the depots that have been set up are fully supplied with LPG from other parts of the country. Most of it is coming from Angola. Most of it is coming from Equatorial Guinea, and so on and so forth. So supply is not the issue. The issue in the market is in the last mile. There are not enough cylinders. If you provide enough cylinders, the homes will have access to cylinder to buy gas. And so the supply will automatically increase because the market is already position to meet the demand. And so supply of gas in terms of LPG is not the issue. Supply in terms of gas to power is a different proposition entirely. And we can discuss that in a different course because it's very complex. It's something that you need to have a very good understanding in terms of the gas to power industry, in terms of power generation, what are the liquidity issues? How is it trickling down to impact on gas uh, availability and so on and so forth. So this is a discussion for another platform it is quite complex. It is something that would take more than five minutes to explain. So LPG supply, um, in option part of the extensive enough, how can we ascertain that this, this is an issue? Uh, but for LPG, I don't see from a truck, it goes to a filling plant, from a filling plant, it goes uh, into your cylinders and into your homes. So uh, CNG, yes, for you to be able to take, take CNG into Sokoto or develop a CNG. So uh, this is, um, mostly going to be an issue with CNG in the North, but that is where LPG comes in because LPG can be moving on, discuss CNG or auto gas as a business and discuss also LPG in detail in our courses that are, are gonna come up. You see how we're gonna break this down for you and you'll be able to understand uh, what this risk is and how you can mitigate against it. Uh, Ibrahim Mutala is saying for a new entrant to industry, where best do you think to start from? You will find that out when you come into the court of, on the uh, 7th of July. Um, so okay. please, um, I, this is this are all the questions. If you have any questions, yep. as much as we can. Thank you very much. Uh, Fantastic. The opportunity is ripe. The money, government has put the money, their money where their mouth is. They've made available tremendous amount of money. Nobody's applying for it because people do not know that that money exists. You can get 50 million, you can get as much as a billion or even 10 billion to either set up a, a LPG filling plant, set up a factory, you know, and do a lot of the other value propositions that we can enlighten you on. And so uh, participate in this program. Uh, afterwards, talk to us about putting together a business plan and we'll guide you on how to access money from the CDM. Thank you very much.
All right. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Nobert. Um, thank you for all the questions as well. Like we said already, um, you can please reach out um, to the information that is shown on your screen. The email is programs at etc.ng. My personal email is david.david um, at etc.ng. Um, we hope that you know, you'd be able to join us in class. Um, again, the training starts on the 21st of July and ends on the 22nd of July. Um, and for everybody who needs, um, um, you know, the, the consulting service, the business plan service, please reach out as well. I will be very happy to, to help out as much as possible, right? Um, so we wish you um, a great weekend. Um, Saturday is practically done. Um, we wish you a restful Sunday. Um, and we hope to see you in class um, on the 21st of July. So we'll call it a day. Thank you so much.